Welcome back to another episode of Forgotten Gear Restorations. We're right in the middle of Spinal Injury Week. Kicking it off with this Hiwat 400. Well, sadly, in the time it took me to film this intro, I had the issue resolved. It was just a hot bias. So, no major episode on this one today. But just know that I do have some other heavy hitters like a Sun coming in, a 1000S. I have another high watt 400 coming in. These things are it's just raining high watts. So I hope this finds you guys well. I'll be hitting the bench with a new amp shortly and getting that one up for you. Take it easy. I don't know how much time I'm going to have for this, but you already know that uh, as, as previously mentioned, we are at the beginning of a new week. This week is, well, given the workload here and the type of amps we're working on. Welcome back to another annual Spinal Injury Week where we take on amps that will uh, challenge our vertebra in every imaginable way. And this one here is going to give me an additional challenge because I don't have any speak on cables. So there's no, um, there's no way for me to uh, just simply plug in a quarter inch speaker cable and, and start uh, doing some tests. So I'm going to have to free this thing from the cab anyway, and I might as well go with um, a little um, solution I made. That's basically a, a, a speaker cable with some uh, al heavy duty alligator uh, clips on the end. And then I'll be able to get underway doing that. This is going to be a particularly challenging amp to work on. Not due to its technical nature, but due to the sheer mass of it. It's quite a beast. But I enjoy working on these. The challenge will be removing the chassis from the, the head shell incredibly heavy so let's see if we can come up with a clever way to do this clever and safe because there's there's a lot of I'm sorry there's a lot of incredibly expensive glass back here incredibly There we go. I mean, when you're dealing with a sextet of KT88s, you're looking at a, a potential retube that can exceed the value of a lot of the more common amps that we work on here. I say we, but that I work on here. This is a one-man show. Um, and um, this is an incredibly large and heavy item that is going to create a very stressful situation for my uh, cabinet here. Let me see if I can come up with something clever and safe. I think I've just come up with a solution. Oh, is that perfect or is that perfect? Nearly perfect. It's the nearly perfect solution. What about this way? Oh, I like it. That's going to work as well. So we have a few options. Beautiful. I'll be right back. I need to reconfigure this thing. All right. Let's get her out. Wow, this partridge iron is almost comical. It's massive. All right, and remember, I'm one hand down. If you think about it, I try not to think about it, that's for sure. All right, so we're going to get her top side down or upside down. Let me grab a towel here. 
something of sufficient length so we don't scratch the heck out of the, my working surface. And these are even difficult to troubleshoot on, on my isolated power supply, on my Variac. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm looking at a 10 amp fuse in this guy and I, I can successfully power things up to four amps with my power supply. So a little challenging, but not impossible. So let's get a look at this beauty. Wow, just gorgeous. Wait a second. This is the one that I recapped. This looks like the one that I recapped. I need to check the serial number. No, it's not. But whoever recapped it prior has similar taste. I like it. Good. Wow. Nice quality. Is this my work? I need to recheck this. This does look like the components that I use. Interesting. So, let me get you in there, hang on. All right, gang, I'm gonna go freehand and just sweep you over the chassis. This looks like, this, it's, of course it's nearly identical, but uh, th this looks like the one that I had serviced for you, Brendan, a while back. But I'm just saying that because obviously it's the same model, of course. And the, the tech who did this work used the same complement of filter caps. Very clean work. So I was able to overcome the challenge of uh, not having a speak on cable by using that speaker uh, adapter, that um, speaker cable adapter that I had just mentioned. And uh, because this is like old Reeve style uh, layout and wiring, I'm able to easily clip that on. These, uh, these outputs are in parallel. So let me get this thing chucked up, and then I'll get you guys in for the initial power on and test. And we'll see if this thing trips the, the circuit breaker on my power supply. All right, so what are we doing? We're gonna pretend like we've never played this amp before. This amp is new to us. Everything goes on zero. We're gonna do a fresh uh, warm up on a current limited supply, which will be again, interesting. We are going to, actually, before I even get too crazy, and I think I'm gonna need to lift this up further because I won't be able to um, accommodate the bias probes as it is. And I'll show you guys um, a, a trick that you've probably seen me employ a few times. If you, if you have a nice flat surface and sufficient um, for sufficient real estate on the top end of your transformers, and they're reasonably even in height, then you can take one of these magnetic parts trays from Harbor Freight or your supplier of choice and use them to safely lift up and stabilize the chassis for inspection or work or assessment. And um, but before you do that, you want to break off the magnet uh, because the way they adhere these is not going to be sufficient for the work we're, we're expecting this thing to do. We need, we need stability, especially because we're dealing with very expensive amps and priceless amps. So you're going to break these off. You're going to gently uh, remove the old adhesive. Um, you're going to prep the surface fully, and then you're going to use your, um, your two part epoxy of choice. And you can kind of see a little bit of the, the that resin here on, on the sides of the magnet. But that's what you're gonna do. And oh yeah, I have all the space I need to get these old boys back in there. Nice. All 
There we go. There's one. And then here's the other. I'll carefully maneuver that this way. It's funny, you do this enough times, you don't even need your eyes. But uh, that's not where I am on this one. Where's the key? Where's the key master? Now this thing is a little north of 70%. It's, it's just bang on 70%. I'm gonna cool her down to about uh, 36, uh, 36 uh, milliamps there. stable all right so we'll We'll let her settle down at 35 milliamps at 594 plate volts. Again, you see that interaction between current and voltage at play. And we'll see if she wants to be stable, and it looks like she does. And we're holding steady. So let's get our tone controls on 50%. Noise free. And she's noise free. I like it, both channels. So outside of this, there's not much that I'm gonna do. Um, I'm not gonna just clean these pots out. They have that wonderful factory grease in there that I don't wanna disturb. What I'll do is I'll uh, certainly, I'll clean out the inputs and then I'll take a look at the tube sockets and maybe I'll just give them a spritz. Tension feels nice. And then we'll just call it a day. And this old girl, then I'll clean off that cab and get her set up. 